Hello boys and girls and welcome to Cairn Hill Art Cabin in County Cabin in Ireland and my name is Margaret McKenna and today we're going to draw a penguin. So why were we drawing a penguin? Well a penguin was uh, asked, uh, they asked me to draw it on, on my live stream the other day. A little girl said I'd love you to draw a penguin. So um, I said well why not? It was the first one I got a suggestion of so I said I'll do it. Now I'm open to loads of suggestions so keep them coming. I have quite a few in line already, well at least I have four anyway, and what I'm going to do at the end of the class is I'm going to pick one out and we'll see what we'll do on Wednesday. So um, if you have any suggestions you can put it up in the live stream and we will, I will add it to my little hat or my tray of suggestions and we'll say we'll pick one up at the end of the class and we'll see what we're going to do. Okay, so without more ado let's get on and draw our penguin. So what I'm going to use today is I'm using a pencil, I'm using a rubber, I'm using a dark pencil as well for outline later on, or it could be a marker, whichever, um, something, or even a very, if you really hold a pencil, uh, if you have a, a 6B pencil or some, a dark pencil would be fine. And I'm also using poster paints. Now the poster paints I'm using are ones that you can get in lots of shops. They're very handy because they wash out your hands, wash out your clothes very easily. But you can use all kinds of paints. You can use acrylics, you can use watercolours, um, and uh, be careful with acrylics that you, you have dirty old clothes on because it's hard to get out of your clothes. Um, you can also use crayons, you can use markers. Now I know one girl is coming in here today to look at it and she is using felt tip markers. So I'll give you a little pointers about that later on because it's a little bit different than using paints. So we'll start with using our pair pencil and we look first of all, oh yes, before we start, I always say this, how to hold a pencil. And I'll say this before every class because it's something that's really important, not just for when you're a child, when you're drawing, but when you're an adult. And it's really handy to know how to do this when you're young because you don't hold a pencil really tight like you do when you're writing. Uh, because when you write and you're holding a pencil tight, the lines are much heavier and harder to change. They're harder to, um, to, 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 to rub out if you need to either. If you use a pencil really light and make your hand really relaxed. So you all do that even for a minute with the pencil in your hand, just really like that and hold it really light without letting it go. It'll help you to loosen it up. So it's good to do a nice loose exercise with your hand before you paint or draw because it makes you nice and relaxed, you know? You have to be relaxed when you paint. So don't be afraid. Don't ever be afraid when you paint or draw because it's fun. So hold it nice and light. And then what happens is your, your actual line on your page will be light, which means that you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to take it out if you want, maybe to move it around a little bit and it won't get in the way, okay? Because a lot of these lines we use as guidelines and they won't be there to stay. We'll be rubbing them out. Now, because I have to show you what to do, I'm going to use a really dark pencil. So I'll remind you, don't do the way I have to do it dark because you won't see it on the page. But remember, you're going to be doing it light. OK, so we start off with the, the penguin itself. Now, if you look, you can see the penguin's head is quite high up on the page. And I, so I'm going to put it up about, I'll start, I'll say, I'll put a little mark about here so we get the idea of where, where it is. Just about there. Let's make it a bit darker. You see, you can't see it because it's quite dark. It's much darker than I have to, than I wanted, but I have to make it dark for you to see. And I'm going to put another line about here, and that's just to show where I want the penguin to finish on the page, because that's or at least his bottom of his belly. And I'll put another line here for where his feet are going to be. And that's just a rough idea. It just makes it easy to know where everything is going to be on the page. So we start off with his head. Now it's about oops. I'm getting, I'm holding it too loose there now. Look, um, I'm going to start about halfway across the middle of the page, and we're going to start with a circle. So I'll just go in front here for a second, so I'll make sure that it's a sort of circleish sort of shape. Maybe a bit bigger than that, actually. Think about that. Okay. There's our pen. There's our our circle shape. Now he's got a big kind of body that comes much fatter at the bottom, as you see, and that's important. So don't make it too skinny all the way down, or it'd be like a sausage pen with a pen. So we're going to bring a line almost a little bit, not just not quite straight, but like that shape. And he's going to come down, and it's going to come down like like that. It's like a big drop, really, like a big drop of water. 
and we're going to do a beak out of him. So the beak really comes, we'll do, do a line that comes into his face, a little bit into his face, and, and it comes, and just don't make it too thick, and it comes like that. Now we're going to join this up because at the moment you've got a little roundy bit stuck onto a big sort of blob shape. So if we just draw a little line that comes, connects them up and one connects it up like that. Do you see? Like that. And we can do the same on the back. I'll just bring this here where you can see it better. Like that. Now remember, we're going to be colouring all this in. So this is where the lines, you won't, if you do these nice and light, I'm doing them dark so you can see them. And then you'll be able to rub out the lines you don't need, you see, and that's what you do. Now, we're going to bring, it's, it's wing lines. So we're going to get the wing line coming down all the way down. Actually, this guy, my guy is skinnier than the other top of that. Bring it all the way down here, like that. Okay. And we're going to bring another little bit that'll come down around like that for his tail. And we can drag it a little bit like that there. So now we've got a width of a tail like that. So we come down to there, and then we do that, and then we'll do that there like that. Now we won't bother with his wing just yet. I have a wing on it, but we'll wait till we do the painting for that. Now it looks like he's got, we've got to put the egg in. So the egg is going to be like a big sort of an oval shape. And you can actually do the whole egg if you want. So I'm going to do the whole egg and we'll, we'll rub out the lines we don't need. So I'm going to do an egg, an egg shape like that. So it's quite big. You see, like that. Now I had mine a little bit forward actually in the last time. So we're going to bring his leg just a little bit like that. And then we have his foot coming in like that. So he looks like he's wearing a pit of trousers. It's just a little shape like that on the end. It's like a little, and it's a little up and down, a little bit like that. And then we have his other leg. We only see a little bit of this, like that. And we have his, his little, again, flat. We don't see much of his feet because his feet are very flat on the, on the, on the thing, on, on the ice. So it's like little trouser legs like that. He looks like he's wearing a little pair of trousers and a little leg like that. You only see a little bit of this. So it's just like a line that comes behind the, the egg, because there's the egg shape. And then his feet are here, and his other foot is here. And that nearly is more or less your, your uh, penguin almost drawn all together. Oh yeah, there's a little bit up here. And then it's just a little space up like that at the top. And that's just where he's got a little different color going on in there. Now, we're going to draw the background. So the background we're going to do is we're going to do a line across like this. And we can come the whole way across. Again, you can make it fairly light. I'm going to put a nice big iceberg on the background. So you can design your own back, uh, iceberg. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as this one. So it can be something like that sort of shape. And it could be like that. Or you could have another, you could make the spike over this side. You can make it your own shape, the, um, the iceberg. Now, we're going to have the, the line. This is, this is this line now coming down here. This is the shoreline because this is the water. It's all icy water. So it's like almost ice. And it's kind of a lot of reflection. You can see the reflection of this because it looks really cold, nearly a sort of thin ice on top of the water. So we're going to come down like this and all the way down like that there. And that is our, this is our water, this is our snow, and here's our iceberg, and this is our penguin. Now, I could make that penguin a bit fatter. He's a bit skinny looking, isn't he? Oh, he's do. He's, he's on a diet, this lad. Anyway. Okay, we're going to put a few penguins in the background. So we're going to just do this very simply, just literally up and down like this. Because, and you can make tall ones, make a smaller one, and a taller one, and then one there, and we can have a taller one, just like that. Oop. See, just like that. Very, very easy to do. And make them fairly tall and skinny. Don't make them too roundy like that, okay? Now, we're going to start to paint now. Now, um, I was, there's a girl, as I say here, who's, who's going to be painting with um, markers, felted markers. And I know myself when I was younger and I used to often paint pictures and felted markers. And you get a very tired hand trying to draw all that blue. So, sky. So I have an idea for that, for children who are doing that. And that is to put more cloud in it. Now, um, and I'll do the cloud actually in this one. So you can you can do whichever version you want. It doesn't matter if you're doing paints, you can do either. Or even if you do markers, you can do all blue sky too. It's just 
more tiring and takes a lot more, you'll use up your marker quicker. So I'm going to put them, now where I'm going to put the, the cloud is quite important in this because I want the blue sky behind the, um, the iceberg. And the reason is I want you to be able to see the iceberg. It's called contrast. So, and it comes into lots of paintings. So if you put a, something black on top of white, you'll see it. If you put something white on top of white, you won't see it. So it's the same with this. If you put the white against a white cloud, it'll be hard to see this. Whereas you put it against a blue background, you will see it. So we're going to put the cloud up at the top here like this. So you can do as many, you don't have to do the same as this. You can do, and you can do another bit, maybe you can do another one like that. Just like that. And now it means that for anybody who's using colors, like they have to do a lot of hand work with, like um, markers, it means a lot less, less coloring to do. So, okay, so let's get to it. Um, we have our blue paint, and I'm just going to go straight in with the blue paint, and um, I'm going to start colouring. So I'm going to do the sky. We're going to come in here with our blue sky, and I'm going to go around my clouds. Or as I say, if you don't want to do, if you don't want to do clouds, you don't have to. You can just do a pure blue sky like I did up there. It's really up to yourself. I'm going around the clouds first because it just makes it easier. Actually, this is where mar markers are actually quite easy because markers, um, you can actually go in and um, you can go around them quite easy. It's not, it's, it's easier than paint actually. Well, there are advantages of using the markers and crayons, of course, too. The crayons you, you could use, you can use the side of a crane. If you want to use a big, if you're using uh, coloring a big area, I'd often take the paper off the crayon and use the side of the crane. It's much easier than trying to do it on the point of the crane. And you get a much, you know, you'll still get the whole area done quicker. So that's just another little tip to do. So here we go. We're just going to work our way across here. And remember, you can look back at this um, afterwards because it's, it's, it's uh, on, on my Facebook page. You don't have to, if you're, you don't have to, if you, you miss something or if you haven't got a chance to look at it all, you can always tune back in and catch up with it. So no panic at all. It's just nice to do it live because you kind of feel that there's people there doing it at the same time. And it's nice for me. I don't be lonely doing it. And I know there's others joining in. And I'd like to say hello to everybody. And I see Faith is doing it. Hello, Faith. How are you? I hope you're enjoying doing it today. I loved your picture the other day. It was absolutely brilliant. And I love the way you went around those eyes on that wolf. They look, it looked absolutely fantastic. Now, there was some lovely work up the other day. Absolutely amazing. And a mammy had put up work with her, with her two children and, and the, the whole lot of them were working together. So you can do this as a family. You can, you know, it's, and as I say, there's a Facebook page, the Children's Art Group. You can join that and put your work up as well if you want afterwards and look at the other work that's done by other children and it's nice to look at other work because it's interesting everybody does it differently that's the one thing you notice when you're doing painting is that even though we all do the same picture it always turns out different this is different from that every time i do a picture it's the same it's never the same okay so there's a sky in okay now what we're going to do next is we're going to do a little bit of shading on 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 the um on the iceberg and on the snow so we're going to mix our white with our blue. So just bring a little bit of white out like that. And bring, or bring a bit of blue, sorry, out of that. And then bring the white back into it. Don't blob, don't put a big blob of white into the blue because what happens is it just goes, and um, you get use up all your white very quickly. So if we just bring it in just very much like that, like just very slightly. Okay. So we end up with a nice kind of a, a light blue color here. Okay, like that. I see it, bring it in. Now, we decide where the light is coming from. So in this picture, I think we can see the, the light is coming from the right-hand side. And why? Because all the shadows are on the left. So the shadows are always on the opposite side of where the sun is. So we're going to use, we're going to put the shadows on the left-hand side of our iceberg. So when I say the left-hand side, these are all little peaks of the iceberg. See, they're like, so we're going to put the left-hand side of this bit. And we just go, don't have too much paint on your brush. That's another thing. Just, you know, it's a bit like when you're painting a wall in a house, always make sure you take the, the paint off uh, and you just do it like that. So you have just a nice little bit 
and we just bring a little bit here. You can bring a bit up. And again, it's going to be different each time I do it from above because a different shape hill I'm going for and a little bit up here as well. Don't mind if you hit the, the, the pen, but don't panic. Now, I'm going to put a bit, a bit, a bit more underneath these, around by the side of the penguins. Just it's not so much, it's not their shadow so much, it's just the shadow on the hill. And we do a little bit of shadow coming up just through the snow. Again, don't mind if you, if you go right up to the penguin here because it makes it look more real than if you leave this space. Go right up to him, and you can put another one coming out the other side like that. So again, we're going right up to his belly, and we're bringing a line up there. We could bring a little bit along the shoreline. And my brush is very dry. That's an, you don't need to use an awful lot of um, paint. I'll just let's see a better look at that now. See? And we're going to the other very important part is to put a shadow under the penguin himself. So we're going to put a shadow under, right up to the egg, right across to the edge, because the sun is coming this way. And it's, and it's also going in between his tail here. And we can do the odd little, you can do little flickers too, like that, little flicks. The reason is it makes it look like there's bumps in the snow. And when the bumps, bumps in the snow, hello, Parik. <laughs> uh, hello, Joan, how are you? Um, uh, when, when we um, put the little bumps in the snow, it's like the shadow of the sun on the snow, like that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do some um, of the water. Now, when we do the water, what's very important, we want to get that nice reflection look. So like as you can see, it's like icy water and there's a real reflection of, this, of the ice on the water. So what we're going to do is we're going to use downstroke. We're going to put it make down, not going across, because a lot of times I think we often think, oh, we'll do water, we go across. And you can do going across. But if you put a downstroke, you get a lovely, you get a lovely um, a reflection feel. So we're going to use our white and our blue again, just like that, blue and white. Now, if we're, the little girl is using the markers, just hold on a minute and I'll explain to you now separately. You can now, what I'm doing now, you can use with the crayons is exactly the same, say crayons or pencil crayons. You can do exactly the same kind of movement with the arms as, as or with the hand as I'm doing. Markers, a little bit different. Well, I'll tell you now in a second. Okay. so. We're going to come down with our light blue line like this. And I'm using a fairly dry brush, not too much paint on it. And I'm going to bring it down. Now remember, we've got a, this white area here, which is our, um, our iceberg. We want the reflection a bit, but we're going to just give a little bit of a shadow just across the shoreline. Now we're going to just let this one go across. It's only a little skinny line like that. And then I'm going to just do a, little, a few short ones down there because remember, this is all the reflection. So you won't really have any blue here too much, not much anyway, you'll see it. And, and we're just gonna let it, just pick it like that because that's the reflection of this here. So just let, don't worry about the cross lines, I'll explain that in a minute. Now, just like that, okay? Now, for the girl who's using the markers, I'll just show you up close there so you can see it a bit better. Can you see that? See the way I'm using the lines going down and leaving a space here? Now, for the girl using the markers, I don't know what kind of set of markers you have. Um, if you have a light blue, you could use a light blue pet. You could use a light blue marker and just go straight down and colouring up and down, up and down, up and down. If you only have the one kind of blue, say like something like that, blue, the smaller set of markers. What I would say is, don't cut. You don't have to colour it all in. You could kind of colour lots of little small streaks coming down like that, like sort of separate. And leave, all the time, leave that white space. Don't forget to leave that white space. That's very important. So now what we're going to do is come back with a slightly darker blue. So we're going to add a bit more of the darker the blue into the white. So it's still not as really dark as the sky, but it's 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 light. It's darker than the color we had on the water. And we're going to use some do some cross strokes now. And if you have the marker, you can use the the, the, the dark blue to use this across with our crayons. Or, and we're going to bring them across like. This. And I'll show this up close to you now. Actually, I'll do this up close because you can see it better then. Let's see where I'm going with this. So I get this all together. Okay, now you see the light on it. It's hard to say. I can never get the right. Ah, there's the angle. 
So I don't, I see I have too much, look, I see I've got too much paint in that brush. I'm just going to take a flick of it off and I'm going to just. And when you do this, it gives that lovely feeling of a reflection. Either very still water or it can look like ice. Either it makes it that icy uh, reflection feel. Okay, so now. That's so that's where we're going with that. Now we're going to start working on our um on our penguin and actually maybe these little lads in the background. Actually, if you have the dark pencil, I would actually use this for um I'd use the dark pencil on this part. And I'll just show you up close again what I'm going to do. I'm going to use, I'm going to draw this, this we're starting this little lad at the right on the on the on the right hand side. So I'm going to draw a line down the middle of his body like that. And on the right hand side, I'm going to just color that solid black like that. And I'm going to put a little teeny mark line out like that, like a beak. I think I'll leave this fellow all black because he's kind of facing, his back is kind of to you. So you can't really see his head at all, really. He's just black. And I might bring this lad the same as the other one. So I'll draw a line down the middle of his body like that. And I'm going to color all of this black. And I put a little mark out of his head there like that. And I might do the same with this fellow because we don't have them, we don't want to make them um all going in a row like um is side back side back we'd have them because they're all they don't all do the same thing although penguins are inclined to face the same way if it, and why do they do that a lot of the time the reason they do it is because it's so cold in the arctic and the wind is coming one direction and they all face away from the wind so that's the reason they do it they're not just doing it because they're all looking at something so again again here line down the middle i'm going to get this black here on this side a little bit of a beak out there like that and we might put in this fellow with his back turned here now so you can't really see him too much he's kind of looking that way but he's you can put a little beak at him he's sort of he's not looking as much over to the right or to the left as the other lads are so we put one down here like that and we're going to color this one like that and little little beak at him like that so now we have a little bunch of penguins in the distance See, now we're going to draw on start with the penguin himself. Now I'm going to mix. I'm going to use the black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix um, a bit of blue in my black. So I get a blue and black. The reason is it makes it a bit like a very, very, very dark blue. If you're using a crayons, I would say because I'm using it's kind of like a dark gray color. Really, it's not. Really, it's almost not really a blue at all. It's really just like a dark gray. I would say if you're using if you're using crayons, you can you can what I would do is probably use um if you use a black and very light um yeah markers would work yeah, anytime markers just watch just using the strokes keep the same direction as strokes and maybe use I'm seeing a question here um you can just use uh, again the same kind of strokes using lighter color if you have a good range of colors you can use the lighter colors and put darker colors on top. Just to be careful because obviously they won't mix in the same way um you can really use any just you just adjust you just keep this kind of use the same movement as at the hand that i use um but keep it which is very important because often the stroke is very important not so much in coloring the body but say things like the water and that um okay so we have the blue and the black here together and as i say if you're using matte crayons you could use um like a gray or you can use a very I use a lighter black by holding it on side and not again holding it lightly oh once more reminder um always ho hold your brush quite nice and light that's it very important and one more thing i want to do actually before I, is i want to rub out a couple of these lines which i should have done i'm going to rub out the line we did just very little few very few lines to rub out in this actually i'm just going to lighten this line on the top of the leg just this one this one you can keep this line just keep lighting this one and just get rid of the extra bits of the of the the egg you know we had the egg and we drew the egg around so we can let that bit that egg that goes underneath behind the leg we can rub that out just like that and lighten this line a little bit it'll be easier for you to lighten it because you've already been doing it nice and light don't worry about this part you can you can take it well we can, we can take that little bit line there this will all be black anyway so it won't matter that's why it didn't really matter how dark I did it there. Now, um, oh, we could do it, Mark, take a little line outside out the beak, in the middle of the beak where it went through the head. That, but you could, you probably wouldn't see your yours because um, you had a nice light line. See, I had to draw dark so you could see it. Now, okay, so we're going to get in with our dark blue. It's like, well, dark gray. It's like a blue with a bit of, or black with a bit of blue in it. 
And we're going to start coloring our pencil, or pencil, or pen a bit even. Now, and we just get this in like this. And we do mostly down strokes. We make it quite. I'm going to bring all of this down, all the way down into his tail. And I might use a little a smaller brush now because that brush is just a bit too big for me. And I'm going to bring it down into this area here. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more black this time to make it darker. And I'm going to do the head area because his head is quite now. Just remember this. Now, remember when we did the beak, we let the beak go into his face a little bit. So we let allow that to, to be so that his face doesn't come right up to the edge of the, the circle. And I'll show you this up close now in a minute so you can have a look. that now just to check some people are saying that's great lovely hello Anna Owen and Rachel alcohol markers I haven't actually used those markers before so um I still say work with it work with the lighter colors and then work with the darker colors on top um and it, it's, you can use if you use the light gray I would use if you have a gray what colors have you got if you have a gray color, start with a gray and then work on a black color on top of it. Or if you if you have, um, that would be the best way actually. Yeah, a light a gray color and then work the black on top. If you have just black, um, I would actually use the pencil to color actually to start with. You could use a pencil and you could use your shading in pencil. And then you could come in with a black marker on top of it. Um, because sometimes you can use just a pencil background and that will give you the darkness, the lighter darkness, if you know what I mean. And then you can work back with the really dark, um, marker on top of that to give it the real depth which I'll show you now in a minute um, because we'll be working shading into it a little bit now um, okay so we're going we're going to go in with our um, yeah, I'll show you this bit up close here like that so you can see how I've let the, the beak into the face a little bit now we're going to get a little bit of light on this part because there's actually a shine on a, on, on a penguin and how you do the shine is I'm going to get a bit of white just a white and I'm going to add a little bit up here like that. This is where the top of the arm is. I've got to outline where the arm is. He's got his, or his, sorry, his wing, really. Yeah, his wing. A little line like that. And I'm going to do another little line like that. A little bit of a, there's a little bit of a bend in it. See, like that? Now, you see the way I've that left that space? That's going to be the space for his arm or his wing. And we're going to just put a little bit there, a little bit like that, like that, okay? Now, what do we do next? This is actually a really ha handy technique to learn when you're doing um, other types of artwork. Is you take off your um, take off the paint off the brush. And as I say paint, take it off. I don't mean to um, I don't mean to actually to wash it off. I mean just rub it in it and just very lightly take it off on a piece of um, paper. So it's almost dry. There's hardly any color left in it. And then we smudge this very lightly again hold your brush really light really light and smudge it back like that just very light really really light and the same going upwards this time up 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 and you get a kind of shine kind of feeling on the coat then you see like that now we're going to go in with a real black this time and I'm going to outline the edge of his wing and we can actually outline that bit there on the inside like that you see and we can just make it really dark at the bottom bit and then again like just like the last time we take that off the brush just very lightly and a bit of hanky very lightly don't smudge it all away and then we just smudge that back up and this is something you can learn at any age because you use this not just little kids you wouldn't use this in painting well they can obviously but adults can use this in painting so it's really good to learn these kind of ways of doing things when you're young because you'll be well ahead when you're older then you'll know exactly what to do so again i'm going to put a bit of black and i'm going to put the black down underneath on the left hand side of his tail inside remember it's near his body 
because the sun is coming over here and I'm going to put a bit of black on his feet because we can't really see his feet too well because they're sort of flat to the ground like that okay now and I'm going to get a bit of the grey colour so I'm going to get black oops I'm going to get a bit of lucky here now a bit of black and a bit of white so it's black and white a grey colour if you have a grey marker pencil crayon or whatever you can use it uh, I'm just going to get a little bit on top of the bee just like that now while I have that grey I'm going to, so it's black and white, but it's mostly white. I don't want to make it too dark because it's amazing how dark it goes very quickly. I'm going to bring a bit of shadow into his body because the moment he's just very blank and white compared to this fellow up here who's got a nice lot of shading on him, okay? And remember, the, the sun is coming from the, the right-hand side, so the shadow will be on the left-hand side. So we're going to do, now, again, I'm going to use a little brush and I'm using little strokes. If you're using markers, you could use... Um, if you have a grey colour, or if you, don't have, if you don't have the marker that's the right colour, you could use just your pencil. Pencil would be perfect for this. And you'll use it exactly the same way. So if you're using pencil, I'll just show you in pencil. You'll just do like that. And use little, see how I'm doing this, look. Little, again, holding the pencil nice and light, far back, nice and loose, and you work it. Little, little strokes. Like that. Up and down, up and down. So I'm going to work down in, in, um, and I'll just show you that up close, actually, so it's hard to see. You see? You can see the pencil, and I'll just, I might just give you a demonstration there. So it's like up, down, like that. So you can do that in different techniques. You can do it in crayons, you can do it in markers, you can do it in pencils, whatever. So we're going to just do it with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, um, with the paint now. So might even add a bit more white into that. And you can always add more white. I mean, it doesn't matter if you don't get the right color first time. Don't panic. I often, often don't get the right color first time. Often and often and often. It's, you never panic when you paint. As anybody who's in my art classes would know. I tell them, don't panic. You can always fix everything. Some way, or you can cheat and turn it into something else, which is even better fun. I mean, sometimes a bit of fun too. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is come down here like this. And it's on the left, working from the left, slightly into his body. And as it comes further, we get a little bit wider because he's got a little more, a little more to cover. And it's nice little small strokes. And it gives it a kind of a slightly um, feathery feel to it. If you just do colour it up and down, you don't feel what you're painting. So it's always good to remember what you're painting. Think about what you're painting. So if you're doing a dog, he's furry. If you're doing a tree, he's got a rough, it's got a rough, the back of the tree. If you were drawing a... I don't know, something, a car, it should be smooth. Um, and then a, a penguin is feathery. So we're going to bring it around like that, underneath the belly. And we're going to do all of this leg in dark because this leg is shadow. You can't see, there's no sun on this leg at all. Maybe the back of it, but we can't see the back of it. So we're going to put all that in shadow like that, near the side of the egg. Now the one that's nearest, we're going to put it, we're going to put a shadow down the left-hand side and a little bit up. And we're going to do shadow down on the right hand side. And why are we going to do that? And I'll tell you why. Because the shadow, the tail is making a shadow. Because the sun is shining on the leg, but this tail is in the way. So we're going to put a little skinny shadow down there. And we're going to put a little shadow down the side of his wing because his wing is it's not stuck to his body. I mean, it is down beside his body, but it's it's kind of coming out a little bit. So there's a shadow. Hello, Grania. How are you? I see you there. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow coming down, just like that. And it comes um, all the way, just like that. And what it does then, it makes, it makes him look like he's, he's round, he's 3D, he's, he's not flat. So I'll just show you that a little closer. You see how it makes this, this comes up and comes, a, comes away from the page then. Now, we, the, the, he's got a, um, a little bit of yellow. He's an emperor pen. Look at that, I put a blob there. Look at that now. Oh dear. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of that in a minute. That isn't actually meant to be there. This is what happens all the time. See? That's, so what I do, there's an example now. There's an example. Always good to show you what you can do when you make it, when you do something you shouldn't do. Okay, so I'm just getting a bit of blue and white. And I'm going to, I'm just going to drag that along. And make it just part of the landscape. Just part of the snow. 
So if you put a blob in the wrong place or something like that, never panic. Just work it into it. Make it something else. So you don't see it anymore. You see? So that's how you get around these things. It's always good to know how to do the to 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 make to cover up things. It's, it's very important, and and because otherwise you can feel, oh God, I've done it all wrong, and it's not a big deal. Okay, so we're going to wash a brush now, and I'm going to add a little bit of why I've got the yellow out. I'm going to put a yellow, and I'm going to put a bit of white into that. So it's a very pale, pale yellow, just an off-white color. And I'm going to do the egg because it is an off-white. They're kind of a creamy color, actually creamier than the than the, the penguin. So off white. Now, if you're using markers, you could use just very light, just little flicks of the yellow, so you don't have too much of it. The main thing is to use the same um, the same direction of stroke, at the same way my hand is going. Okay. So I'm going to bring it round like that. See, you've got because it's an egg. We're going to bring it round, round, and around like that. Now I'll show you that up close. So it gives it a roundy feel. And if you're using a crayons, you can do the same. And, and now I see where I got the blob. See, I painted my hand. <sighs> Story of my life. At least it's not my clothes. It's often on my clothes too. I probably would be the worst person to be given out about anybody having paint on their clothes, any children, because I'd have it on my clothes all the time. So anyway, we're going to have a little bit of shadow. So we've got our black and our white again, our gray color. And I'm just going to put a little shadow on the top of the egg. Just a little shadow. On, on the top of the egg, because remember, and set on this side of the egg too. So just like that, a little shadow going around the side, and even a little bit this side, just in the very edge of it. Now, we can wash our brush again. And you see how I made a little, left a little white bit in the middle of the egg here? And if you leave a little white bit, you have your strokes going around and around like that. If you leave a little white bit in the middle of the egg, it make it look nice and round. There's almost like a shine on the egg. So the we're going to put a little bit of the yellow in here because he's, he's an emperor penguin and they've got a little bit of a yellow bit just in under their on their neck and in here like that. So little flicks like that. And again, you can do that in markers or cranes. That's fairly straightforward. Just like that. See? There's only a little bit. Now the last bit is he needs an eye. So if you have a little bit of white paint, just a little dot, just like that. And I think, I think that is it. Yes, and there he is. We have a pen. Oh, you might put a little bit of a mark, but I'm just going to put little lines on the back of his foot, just little lines there to make sure that it looks like he's got toes. But they're just long lines. And there we go. And there, oh no, there's one big thing. I knew there was one thing I wanted to do. That is it. But what I want to do is, the idea I have with this one, is the reason I want to use the black crayon is, the, or the black marker or the black, um, if you have a black, well, if you're using black marker or markers, it'd be grand anyway, is we're going to outline it. And I think it's just to make it nice and definite. So I'm literally going to get the dark, I have a dark pencil crayon, black one, it's a very dark one. Um, like it's a really good, good solid black. Some of the blacks aren't great, but this is a good one. And we're going to just going to outline the picture. It gives it a slightly cartoony feel, this, um, rather than a sort of a realistic look. But it, it suits the type of picture that it is. And we're going to come around his beak like that, and around his head. And if it's wet and you have a marker, you, want, you can always come back and do this afterwards when it dries a little bit. Um, it's grand with this because it's not um it's a crayon pencil crayon but if you were doing paints and you wanted it to dry a little bit you could and then come back with it and use a black pen uh, felt tip marker would be perfect um and if it's poster paints they dry very very fast anyway It'll be drying in 10 minutes or so and we'll just come down here like that and we're going to come down his body all the way down his body like that and I'm going to let it come in a little bit on that down to the is down to the egg because that leg is in the background, so you can actually make it look like it's more in the background with the thick line there. And we can outline the egg, and we can outline we can outline the bottom of his belly. We don't have to outline the whole way up here. We can just outline a little bit because his leg here is on this side, 
so we have a little bit of a line there but we keep a little bit of the that bit blank and then we come up here as well and just you can outline his feet if you want although they're already in black so it won't really make much difference but you can see now the difference that makes to it how clear that is now you see look so now okay so that's it um and what i'm going to do now is i think we said at the beginning of the class i'm going to see what we're going to do the other day for those of you that joined um i got a few suggestions of what to do the first suggestion i actually had to do was a penguin so that's why i'm doing it today and i've I have several suggestions as well that were put in the other day and I pick at the end of the class one of them out of the hat as it were or out of the tray as it may be and maybe what you could do do boys and girls if you've other suggestions that you'd like me to do I will put them into the tray on Wednesday at noon I have my class next time on Wednesday all well at noon and I will uh, pick another one so it's up to you to decide what I'm going to do next. And I don't have a clue what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make it, I'm going to choose one now. Okay, so you're ready? Just let's see. I have to close my eyes now. And I'm going to pick one. I have a clue what this is. I put them with the four drop suggestions in other one earlier on that were given to me. So let's see. Okay. I am going to do an Easter bunny. And I think that was suggested by Faith the other day. So I'm going to do an Easter bunny scene. So we'll have an Easter eggs and an Easter bunny. So that will be our subject for Wednesday. So I hope you tune in, boys and girls, and we'll see you then. And thank you so much uh, for joining in. I really appreciate it. And I hope you've learned something today. And um, as I say, you can join the Children's Cairn Hill art page and you can uh, put your work up there. Um, thank you very much. And I'll see you soon again. See you. Bye bye.